Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the third of five interviews for the inaugural Women of Character virtual event. I'm Deborah Harrington, the first woman chair of the Orange County Council Boy Scouts of America in their rich 100 year history. On behalf of our council, we are so thrilled that you have joined us for this wonderful virtual event, and we hope that you enjoy hearing the inspiring stories of our 2020 Women of Character honorees. Over a year ago, the Boy Scouts of America organization opened its doors to young women to enjoy and learn from our leadership and character development programs. Our desire in creating this event is to highlight influential women in our community, to provide an inspiration to our young women, and to help prepare them for their futures. You will notice at the bottom of the video, there's a link to help support our mission in developing our future leaders. Please consider donating to our council. Normally we host uh, several events throughout the year to raise donor-based funds to keep our mission going. But unfortunately, this effort has been temporarily thwarted. Like many businesses and organizations, the impact of the coronavirus has had a profound effect on many levels, resulting in fewer funds coming in. If you can donate our youth and our mission, our organization as well, would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration. Today, we will be speaking with our third Woman of Character honoree, Kelly Valarcus Hanks, President and CEO of Earth Family Products, a family-owned and operated business for 53 years, leading the way in green plant powered cleaning products. We cannot wait to hear her story. We do what we do because it's the right thing. And as we're looking ahead to the next 50 years. There is only one, one manufacturer in the United States that has achieved the triple crown in environmental protection. Not an easy thing to do. This is a company of new ideas, of really breaking ground to really make this world a better place. And I think Senator Bob Protecting our earth is so very important. It's our legacy to our children and to our children's children. The fact that 50 years ago, when green wasn't even a cool thing to do or be, became this, is just spectacular. This is a perfect example how doing good and doing well are not mutually exclusive. We're here to celebrate 50 years of growth, innovation, and job creation by Earth-Friendly Products. The founding of Earth Friendly Products, Ecos, is a story that rivals any other. The story of Ecos is the quintessential American success story. And that story starts, as many do, with an immigrant who came here with nothing more than big dreams. Η αντίληψη αλλά και τα τεράστια αποθέματα γνώση του Βαν αποτέλεσαν τη βάση για να κατανοήσει τι δυνάμει που επηρεάζουν την ίδια την ανθρώπινη χημεία. A 17-year-old young man who immigrated from Greece spoke about no English, lived in homeless shelters. No money, working hard, best he can, making his way, and he starts a company. Η εταιρεία άρχισε να μεγαλώνει όχι από τη διαφήμιση αλλά χρησιμοποιώντα το μήνυμα από στόμα σε στόμα. And this pioneer's green legacy is expanded today by his daughter, CEO of Ecos, Kelly Volhakis Hanks, a woman who has grown the business to unimaginable heights, yet preserving and enhancing their commitment to the environment. If you look at our story, Van built this company starting out in the garage. He embodies our heritage and our history. Kelly stands here today, navigating us and embodying the company's bright future. Δίνω το λόγο στην κυρία Κέλλη Βλαχάκη Χάνκς. The heart of a company and our sister, Kelly Βλαχάκης Χάνκς. You cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference and you truly have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. And now we're looking ahead to the next 50 years and thinking about how we can honor our pioneering legacy while continuing to grow and innovate, especially during some of these challenging times. And so it's my great hope that tonight everyone feels nature deeper and does everything possible to protect her. This is a home run, what EFP does every day. To walk into this building is to walk into heaven. A company that embodies the best of American ideals. 
thank you all for helping us make a difference. Kelly, scouting teaches us the importance of leave no trace to our youth on camping trips and in our programs. As one of our Orange County Council's flagship properties, the Irvine Ranch Outdoor Education Center, our youth-driven STEM programs help teach our youth the importance of giving back to the environment and how they can help protect it. As president and CEO of ECOS, leading your company's production of environmentally friendly cleaning products, you have been internationally recognized for your highly effective leadership and influential voice in the green movement and in corporate social responsibility. You have proudly led and implemented sustainable practices that have helped make ECOS a model for green America business today and leading the future as well. As you reflect on what you've accomplished for your company, what knowledge or advice do you think is important to pass on to the youth in our community to inspire and to encourage our youth to be also lead by example, being more environmentally responsible? Well, thank you so much for those kind words. And I couldn't agree more with the mission of Boy Scouts to really instill environmental stewardship in our youth at a young age. It's of critical importance. They are going to inherit our beautiful planet and the actions that they take in these formative years are key to the leaders they will become. And one of the most inspiring things to me is to see our young people are already leading the way. They're already championing change. You know, as I sit here today, we have the highest levels of CO2 emissions. We have 800 million people that are already affected by the climate crisis. So we have to act, we have to act boldly now. And raising our children to really be proactive is key in the solution. At, at ECOS, we've done a few things as well. We have partnered with museums that are adjacent to all four of our manufacturing facilities. Uh, so here in Orange County, we've partnered with the Discovery Science Center. And we have a great eco science program where they go into the fifth grade classrooms and they teach the children about green chemistry and the importance of relying on natural things to create products. Uh, we also do things in museums themselves, whether it's in Washington, Illinois, New Jersey, or right here in Orange County, California, where people can go to exhibits and learn how to create healthy habitats and healthy homes and giving young people the tools. But I also love that about Boy Scouts, the fact that that's part of your oath and part of the Boy Scout handbook, to really make sure that you're conservation minded because in the end of the day, our youth will inherit this planet. And unfortunately, they'll also inherit the crisis that our planet faces. And so their actions will make all the difference. Wow, what a beautiful mission that was born, I think 53 years ago. And look at what you've done today. So impactful. Um, the insight that you and your family has had to create the company and under your legacy where you've taken it, you have to be so proud. You are leaving a truly an impact on our environment. So for Thank our next so question, much. oh, you are so welcome. <laughs> now more than ever, households and businesses, as you just explained, and workplaces are focused on that heightened level of uh, sanitation required to combat the unfortunate spread of COVID-19. With your company's legacy brand created again over 53 years ago, has your business plan and focus been influenced or required a modification as a result of this global pandemic? Please share with me and our audience what positive lessons or practices do you hope comes from these unprecedented times for our nation, our world, and our local community, which you're so a part of? Well, I can tell you that this has certainly been an unprecedented time for our business as it has been for our entire world. Uh, I will never forget on March 16th, seeing the orders coming in uh, through our system. And at that time, it was about eight times the normal levels we see it at. And that's fundamentally because cleaning products 
are really the greatest weapon in the war on COVID. And so there's nothing more important to protect our frontline workers and protect the health of ourselves and our families than having a clean environment. Um, but it's also of critical importance that that clean environment is also a green environment. And so I want to make sure that as we work to protect ourselves and our families, we understand clearly what the CDC is recommending. And they're recommending two things. First, clean, then disinfect. And when you're cleaning, please select products that are safe, that are healthy for our planet, and that are healthy for our families. And so as we as we navigate these challenging times, uh, we did many things as a business. First of all, we added a second shift at all four of our manufacturing facilities because we really wanted to scale up to meet the global need for cleaning products, make sure that we kept our retailers in stock and full, make sure that we kept our institutional partners like hospitals and others uh, in stock in full as well so that they had those things. We went ahead and let all of our employees who could telecommute do so. And then for our team members uh, that are here on site, our essential workers, I truly believe they demonstrated the highest level of patriotism. And patriotism is really rising up when your country needs you the most. And that's what we really wanted to do here. You know, our mission for 53 years has been to protect people. That's what we do. It's in our soul. It's in our DNA. And we plan to do that for the rest of our years to come. And certainly this time period was a moment where our mission to protect people and to protect our planet really strengthened our team. And we really aligned to make sure that we could really service our country. That is so impressive. And one of the Boy Scouts motto is to be prepared. Clearly your company was well poised for this pandemic. No one would ever expect it, but to rise to that occasion is a wonderful compliment to your leadership as well as your essential employees. They're all Thank essential, you. but we do want to highlight the extraordinary commitment they made to you and to our community to deliver the additional products in a timely manner that we all need. So I am just thrilled to have this opportunity. It's just so timely to interview you. Thank you. You're welcome. When you're leading a nationally distri distribution company, such as your green cleaning brand, and as the only female leader in the industry, congratulations, and that is hard earned. There are certain to have been challenges, foreseen and unforeseen, that empowered you to achieve greatness, and you continue to do so. Beyond perhaps your own expectations, does one or two of these challenging times come to mind now? And if so, what are your guiding principles that helped you navigate through these difficult times that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you as well for being the first woman to chair Boy Scouts of America here in Orange County. It's wonderful to see a chairwoman of the board. Um, and I love seeing other women in leadership roles because it's so important for our young women to see mm -hmm individuals that look like them helming organizations and helming companies. So, so congratulations to you as well. Um, I would certainly say for me, you know, I took over uh, as CEO of our company in 2014, and I've now uh, been the CEO for the last six years. Uh, but we're a family owned and operated business started 53 years ago by my father. He was a wonderful leader, a great visionary, a wonderful pioneer in the space of really looking at our footprint and how we were interacting with our environment and pioneering a lot of the green chemistry. And he unexpectedly passed away in 2014. And I would tell you that that was a very challenging moment for me because in one second, you have obviously the grief and the loss of someone who had been not only a wonderful visionary leader for over 40 years, but also my father. And in that moment, and in those days and hours ahead, you realize the amount of strength and courage it takes to stay focused, to continue the mission, to continue the vision. I'll never forget the day after his passing, one of my team members asked if we should stop shooting for the day in honor of his passing. And I remember thinking wholeheartedly, if the first day after he passed, I didn't ship product, he would have 
Didn't show up that. <laughs> we had to ship and we had to ship more product. Oh, and wow. so, you know, it really, it's one of those moments that's a very defining moment because you really have to, you know, authentically lean in to yourself and to your internal power reserves. I think so many of us don't realize the internal strength we have in the that we possess when we're faced with the greatest adversities. But I really saw that in that moment, you know, it was extremely painful losing him. And I certainly still miss him six years later, but his mission and his vision lives on. And I'm just so proud of the work that my team has done and what we've done to really elevate that. You know, now we have four facilities, all of our facilities in the last six years have all become carbon neutral, water neutral. They're all platinum zero waste. And so truly this trifecta and sustainable manufacturing, you know, has not been seen before. And I hope it'll really serve as an example to other uh, businesses to follow suit as well. But uh, I think that, you know, people should really understand that, you know, when obstacles arise and when we're in our darkest hours, sometimes it's a moment to pause, to reflect, and then really to become the strongest versions of ourselves. Oh my goodness, what an eloquent answer. Um, passionate to, to your father's legacy that he created. It's in your DNA, as you said. It's innate for you to lead. And I'm just so pleased you shared that story with us. A very personal story, but it articulated what's so necessary in any leader. But especially as a woman, because sometimes we don't have the role models that perhaps are naturally in the male um, world, if you will. And you are a significant, significant example of what great leadership is. And I know your father was so proud looking down at you that day you took the rein and said, I'm doing this for him. This is for him. <laughs> you rallied. You rallied and you knew what he wanted. Gosh, congratulations. You must be so proud. As a female leader, as we reflect on what's unique to females, because we're all great leaders, but again, we're honoring you for a woman of character. So I do refer back to a woman leader. What do you think may have been the most significant barrier that you had in your career? Was it that just moment that you talked about when the torch was handed to you prematurely as far as never wanting to see your father um, leave, you know, you as a father, you as a leader? Well, absolutely. You know, um, certainly that was the greatest challenge that I faced in that moment. Uh, I would say as women leaders, we also face a lot of uh, subliminal and overt skepticism mm -hmm. in our ability to lead. And uh, I'm certainly the youngest daughter in a Greek family. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually Greek and African American mixed. My mom's black, my father Greek, and um, in an often patriarchal society, it's unusual to have the youngest daughter take the reins. Uh, but one of the great things about my father was he really looked to you know who could really do the best job to lead and to stay committed to the vision and the mission and really valued work. I think my father never looked at gender and never exercised any of those prejudices in his decision-making process. And that's very important because we need men to also lean in. Uh, quality is important and it's important we judge people on the content of their work and their capabilities. And we still see that far too often this gender gap exists in pay and in positions because that's not the case. And so I would, I would say that, you know, a challenge is always to um, be aware of the prejudices that may be present but never give in to those, never allow those to define you. Always to make sure to stay committed to your purpose and your mission um, and make sure that you make the path forward. Wow, I love that answer. And I have to guess that your mom is quite powerful, strong and beautiful in her own right. Because without that, your father wouldn't have that confidence to make a decision based on skills and talents and leadership. So she has to be equally as impressive as your father. What a great Thank example. You. And you I, honor I, had, I had such a wonderful mother too. I mean, she was, I unfortunately lost her as well at a very young age. And she was just 
a beautiful role model and a true embodiment of, you know, what it means to be just so authentic and true to yourself and, uh, and certainly was my greatest cheerleader. I know when I look at my daughter, one of the things I want to do for her is just remind her that I believe in her so that she can really always believe in herself too. That was a great gift she gave me. That's one thing that I think is one of the most crucial things we can teach our, our youth, whether it's a female or male, but specifically for our young girls that may not have had the traditional role models that men may have had, especially growing up in my era. And I remember entering a male dominant business that you and I talked about just briefly before our interview started. And being that, um, we were asked to conform to the way men dressed, the way the men postured themselves. And I had a wonderful person, a female um, business uh, leader, and she said, no, 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 no. Don't ever give up your femininity to conform to the male dominant world you live in. Um, be yourself. And you just articulate that beautiful. I think that is the most precious gift we can give our children is to have confidence in who they are believe in themselves and go forward in their own journey with that conviction. Nobody can take that away from you. Right. That's right. That's uh, right. Oh, wow. Well, and my next question is perhaps to that point is I think we've all felt nervous in one point in our life or another to ex to step into that role that's being asked of us when we don't have the experience. It may be that new experience or that one unforeseen opportunity in that temporary insecurity you may have had at one time or another, how did you, sure. it? how did, what was yours, what are your skill sets that help you overcome that um, uncharted territory, if you will? Absolutely. Many different things. So even if we're talking about that moment when I took the reins for our company, I had had the good fortune of working in various parts of our company in sales and operations and finance and in production. So I had, you know, a large breadth of knowledge, but a very big leap still for me to take over the reins entirely. And so certainly in those beginning days, you do feel nervous. You are concerned. Am I making the right decisions? Will these produce the results that I want? But it's important to be decisive. It's important to really understand and trust your own intuitions and your own convictions. And it's also important to build a wonderful, diverse team around you. And I think diversity in teams is something that people often overlook. But having a team that's comprised of people from different backgrounds and from different you know, parts, different demographics is so wonderful because for us, we're a consumer products company. We're servicing a very diverse consumer. So I want my internal management teams to be a true reflection of that. If you look at our executive teams, we're 58% women, 42% men. And, uh, and I'm really proud of that as well. A lot of women in leadership roles and a lot of different voices at the table and a great team alongside of us. Wow, I love hearing that. That's an ex ex excellent example of you, uh, diversity, skill sets. Genders to me is something that I hope we evolve past because if you truly look at the person, their skill sets, what they bring to the table, the diversity of thought, that's when we really become the best of who we are individually and collectively. Yeah. And what a beautiful example you created at your firm. Congratulations, that should be applauded. What are the few events perhaps that shaped your life that you have um, that have made you that extraordinary leader? Um, you talked about your father and your mother as a beautiful example. You talk about the leadership that he um, created the ethos in your your culture and your company. It melds beautifully to who you are today. But what do you think are some of the most extraordinary things in those time frames that really lead you to where you are today? You know, I would go back to my childhood and I would say that when I was 14 years old, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And um, I remember at that time she had a 10% chance of survival. And thankfully I had her another 15 years. I'll be forever grateful for that. Wasn't long enough, but really glad I had her until I was uh, almost 30. And I remember in those initial days and weeks um, after her diagnosis, really wanting to do something to protect her. How could I be of service? What could I do? How could I fix it as a young person? I went to all the doctor's appointments with her and I listened in on everything and I sat up all the nights with her. And I remember at that time really wanting to be a doctor. 
I thought, you know what, that's what I'll be. But as I graduated from high school and I ended up going on to UCLA, I grew up in a small town in Illinois, um, but then went on to UCLA. So moved from a town of 3,000 to a school with 40,000. Um, I realized I was actually more interested in getting involved in business for good. And how could businesses protect those people that are vulnerable. And so in our business, I really saw an opportunity to really start educating people. How do we prevent cancer? What are the things that really are increasing our risk of developing these diseases? And to really work on that side of the equation. And so, you know, here at Ecos, we're doing that every day. And a lot of that comes from my childhood. I want to educate people. So many people are washing their plates and glasses, and they don't think about the residue on their plates or the residue on their glasses. They might be buying organic food. They might be thinking about what's in them, but they're oftentimes not thinking about what's on them or around them. I want them to think about those things because I want to empower them. I want to give them the ability to say, hey, I'm going to read the ingredient on this cleaning product. And no, I don't want formaldehyde or any of these cancer causing ingredients to be exposed to my family. And we forget skin's the largest organ on our body. We absorb things quickly through our skin. So the residue on our clothes impacts our health. And I want to make sure that other People don't feel like I do, right? When I was 14 years old and I was scared and I felt like there was nothing I could do, there are things that we can do to prevent illness. And it's around diet and it's exercise, but cleaning products are a critical part of that equation. And, uh, and that's something I'm very passionate about. And I'm passionate about it because right now in the United States, there's no requirement to disclose ingredients in cleaning products. And other parts of the world have that. So if you're in Europe or Asia, you know what's in a cleaning product. You can read the label. Uh, consumers here should demand the same. Transparency is always key. Do you think we're going there? Are we going to get there at some point? Are you yes. part of the legislation body that will make that happen? Because you're absolutely correct. And for me, the biggest risk we have as individuals is to be uneducated. And so for you to lead that effort to educate people, to acknowledge that there's things that we can control. Very few things. There, that we can there are. You know, I'm really proud to say that we sit here in California right now. And in October of 2017, um, I spent a lot of time at the federal level lobbying for um, the Cleaning Products Labeling Act. And then, you know, resorted back to the state levels when we weren't getting a lot of traction. And in October of 2017, Governor Brown signed into law the first um, law in the nation that would require the disclosure of cleaning products here in the state of California. That law went into effect in January 1st of this year of 2020. Right now it's online, but by January of 2021, it'll have to be on PAC. And that's really exciting because we believe that, you know, if companies are making products for the 44 million people that live in California, they're not going to make one label for California and a different one for the rest of the nation. So we think this will really force a change. And finally, consumers will have access to the information. It's amazing what the hidden blessings come from. You know, your mom's um, battle with cancer. Oh my gosh, that gave you a focus perhaps um, that you may not necessarily had in that timing. But what a wonderful gift that you brought for yourself and the company and the community to educate people of control your environment the best you can. And what a perfect alignment with your passion and your company's legacy and branding. Oh Thank my you. gosh, so impressed by you. You clearly are a very extraordinary woman and a leader of many different industries around the nation. What attributes do you distinguish a good leader and to whom do you look up as a role model? You already mentioned your mother and father, but is there somebody in your environment oh, you know, or absolutely you know when you look back in history i think of rachel carson as an amazing role model right a woman in the 60s who defied the status quo and who really raised the flag and said something is going wrong you know she's oftentimes credited as the founder of the modern environmental movement and her pivotal work silent spring about the dangers of ddt really, you know, revolutionized a lot of people and really got people laser focused on what do we need to do? You saw, you know, shortly thereafter, uh, back in 1970, the EPA was created. Uh, we just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Environmental Protection Agency this year in 2020. Um, so certainly, you know, women like her, 
that came before me certainly inspire me. And then, you know, going to UCLA, I did a lot of internships. I had the great pleasure of, of doing an internship at a PR firm called Brown and Dutch. And, you know, my first, my first boss there, I'll never, never forget her internship. I always touch bases with her. And as I climbed, because I spent five years working outside the family business first, which I'd highly recommend to anyone that goes into a family business, but I'll never forget getting my first role as director of PR and, you know, and just really reaching out to her and her saying, listen, you know, number one, just surround yourself with your posse. Number two, you know, and just really always being there. And I think mentorship is key. I'd really encourage women to really reach out to other young women and to mentor them and to serve as a sounding board and to give them a lot of advice from your experience, right? Everyone has to walk their own path, but I always think it's valuable to share the experiences you have so that you can really inspire others to really achieve their dreams as well. Oh, well, you certainly have done that. I'm certain anybody that meets you and has this beautiful gift of opportunity to get to know you as an individual and also as a woman business leader and a leader of a magnificent company would be- Thank you. And, you know, the second part of your question, which I don't want to fail to answer, is what really makes a good leader? And I really honestly believe to be an inspiring leader, you have to be authentic. You have to have a mission that you believe in. And so I feel really fortunate that, you know, our mission here is to protect people, pets, and the planet. And it's to do it through the creation of our plant-powered cleaning products. But that mission is something that I wake up every morning and I'm really excited to fulfill, you know, as a mother, as a leader, as, you know, as a citizen of our great planet. It's, it's all of our responsibilities. But I think that that's something that really fills me with great pride to sit at a company that's environmentally responsible. That's also socially responsible. We pay a minimum wage of 17 an hour. We're doing things differently here. Um, and it's it's a way in which to really um, lead and to really galvanize others um, to the mission. And so I like, I really do appreciate leaders that are authentically connected to their mission. I could see if I was in one of your staff meetings, how empowering you must be. Um, I can see that because you lead by example. That's a cliche that we use quite a bit, but you clearly do. The passion comes through with every word that you articulate. Um, and it has to be so well rewarding for you as well as your team to be part of this legacy that you have created and sustain as well, to use that terminology from your environmental sustainability. Um, it's true. A company can't survive without great leadership. And leadership is also defined by who follows you. So you have a great following there with your staff. Again, compliments to all of you. If you could impart one piece of advice to young women today, what would that be? Live a purpose-filled life. And when I say a purpose-filled life, you know, um, a lot of people think about money. A lot of people think about materialistic things. These things won't bring you joy and happiness. What will bring you joy and happiness is when you have a purpose and you get to wake up every morning and fulfill that purpose. And so I really, you know, when I talk to my daughter, I talk to her all the time. What are your passions? What are your dreams? What are your goals? What do you feel like you'd like to spend your life doing? When you have a purpose-filled life, I think it truly brings great joy and happiness. And the rewards are far greater than any sort of monetary payout. And if you really are doing what you love and you really are, the monetary things will come as well. But uh, I think a purpose-filled life is the most important thing. My goodness, I couldn't agree with you more. And I see a common th thread between all of you remarkable women leaders is that that is that purpose driven life. And to be able to articulate in your daily activities and your leadership is what makes a difference between somebody that is just leading and someone that is leading with purpose and vision and carrying that out to fulfillment. You are a beautiful example of that. And even though that concludes our interview questions, I want to ask, is there anything that you would like to part on us that I haven't touched upon with my um, questions today? Oh, I would, you know, I would just like to thank you so much for this great honor. And I'd like to thank the Boy Scouts as well. You know, I love the fact that since your founding in the early 1900s, that 
you know, conservation and leaving no trace and really caring for our planet is so ingrained in the mission. And um, it just really is a great honor to be recognized by an organization that holds that so near and dear to their hearts. And so thank you so much for the work that you all do every day. We need our young people at the table. You know, we just actually created a chief youth officer role here last year. And it's so exciting to hear from our young people because I used to say they're future leaders, but I realized they're actually oftentimes our leaders right now. So um, I just want to thank you for what you do. Oh, I hope I get to know you even more after this interview, because I think there's so much to the breadth of who you are and your leadership. I love hearing about your new youth position. Um, when COVID came came to all of us, unexpected, uninvited, unwelcomed, I reflected quickly when the Boy Scouts programs were brought to a halt. And I thought, my goodness, we as the scouting family have to think outside of our own programs. How can we give back in this pandemic? And I happened to be talking to a woman um, in Orange County that said, what do you think? I said, well, I heard about a food bank here that they have tremendous amount of food to give out to all those people that are now confined to their homes, but they have no way to deliver it. Maybe our youth could be part of that. What, what evolved out of that was COVID-19 scouting and we just got our patches this week. We actually create the shield for people that are on the front line because um, that was something that was not easily to achieve and the masks don't do such a will. So the scouting program has their STEM program that is completely aligned with what you achieve and are continue to achieve for our youth. But we also have the opportunity to give back. And it's when we think outside of ourselves and we yes. think where the need is and how can we deliver it that's when we're the best part of who we are. And I can't compliment you enough for showing us that for your own legacy and what you've created there for Ecos. It's, it's a beautiful story, a wonderful testament to your legacy and to your parents as well. So as we conclude today, I am so honored and privileged to recognize you as a woman of character, part of our inaugural class. And I thank you so much. What a gift of time and a gift to hear about your legacy. So beautifully articulated. Thank you so much, Kelly, for your time today. And again, congratulations on being part of our inaugural class of women of honorees. And to our audience, if you are in a position to help support our programs and our scouting mission, please follow the link below to donate to the Orange County Council Boy Scouts of America. All donations are greatly appreciated and you will help young women in our programs on their personal journey of developing to acquire strong leadership skills that will create the foundation for their life courses. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you can join us again tomorrow at the same time as we talk with our fourth honoree, Missy Larson, Vice President of Philanthropy and Communication Impact for doTERRA. And if you missed any of this week's Women of Character interviews, check out our Orange County Boy Scouts YouTube page where we'll be posting these interviews daily. Thank you so much again for joining us.